Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to the YOLO Live channel. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the new YOLOcast platform. YOLOcast is a live streaming service from YOLO Live that gives you a platform to build your live streaming experience for your viewers. It's really hard to describe all that YOLOcast can do in a brief statement. It's a platform that you can stream, host, schedule, and monetize all in one place. Some say it's sort of like YouTube, but it's ad-free and it gives you more control. My hope is that over the course of this video, you'll not only learn how to use many of the capabilities of YOLOcast, but we'll also be able to see how these features might benefit and help you in whatever your live streaming endeavors are. So first, I'm gonna give you a quick start tutorial, how to get up and streaming with the YOLOcast platform. And my hope is that that will give you an idea of just what this whole thing is about. Then we'll step through it and take a more in-depth look at the options and capabilities available to you. The first thing you need to do is go to yololive.com and click on YOLOcast, overview, and then start a free trial, and that will start the process of creating your YOLOcast account. Once you've signed into your YOLOcast account, this will be the interface you'll be presented with. And the menu here on the left is where we can configure and use various features of the YOLOcast platform. Events at the top is where we'll create our live streaming event that contains all the configuration for a live streaming session. If I create a live event, this is where I'll enter a title, description, upload a thumbnail, select the source, where the live stream is coming from, video settings, the start and stop time for the live stream, and then select any additional destinations, social or otherwise, for the stream. I say additional because by default, your stream will go to any embedded players you've created on your website. And we'll go over all of this in more depth in a minute. Now our event is created, and if we click into this event, we can see a lot of information about our stream. And one thing I really like about YOLOcast is I can now go over to my YOLO box and I'm gonna create a stream. And on the destinations page, I'll enable YOLOcast. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go live on the YOLO box, which starts sending my video to the YOLOcast platform. Back in the YOLOcast event page, I can see that my video is getting to YOLO cast from my YOLO box and that everything looks healthy all before the event actually starts and goes live to my destinations. On my website, I've already created an embedded player and once I created my event, it started counting down to the scheduled start time of the event. So my viewers can see when I'm gonna go live. And now at my scheduled start time, it goes live with my video from the YOLO box and will continue to stream until the scheduled end time. That was a very quick demonstration of how to go live with YOLOcast. On the one hand, it's pretty quick and easy to get up and running, but I also think you can start to see some of the power and potential of the YOLOcast platform. We're sending video from our YOLO box to YOLOcast where we create an event that manages the scheduling and destinations and all the information for our live stream. And after my live stream completes, the YOLOcast platform gives me the ability to reuse that content in a number of different ways. Whether that's posting shorter highlight clips on social media or completely restreaming the whole video as a new simulated live stream. So now let's walk through each page of the functionality of the platform in more depth and explore some more of its capabilities. I'm gonna talk through a number of these pages first before I come back to the events page because a lot of these feed information and capabilities into our events. So we'll wanna see how those work first and then we'll see how it all ties into an event. On the embed page, what we have here at the bottom is our HTML code that you need to place into your website's HTML code for the player to show up. This is the code that creates and links your player to your live streams from YOLOcast. Everything above this is letting us configure and select options that generate this HTML code, which then determines how our player will work and look. The first option, media type. Selecting events will show your live streamed events in the player. 
Selecting Media Videos creates a player that will allow visitors to your website to view videos that you select from your Media Center, which is a collection of your previous live streams, as well as any videos you've uploaded. So let's choose Events to show what we're about to live stream. Filter lets us limit what events the player will show. So if you only want a certain source or a certain event that you've created to show up in this player, you could select that. For example, if you have a weekly reoccurring event that you want to show on a particular page of your website, you would choose by event and then select that event and only that reoccurring event would show up in this player. I could see that being useful for churches that have a reoccurring Sunday live stream and want that to show up on the live worship page of their website, but then also have other live events that occur during the week and you want those on different pages of your website say your youth group or some other activity, you could use the filter to accomplish that. Integration method lets us choose what type of HTML code it will use for the player. JavaScript, inline frame, or just provide a link to a player that is hosted on the YoloCast server. You'll need to select whichever works best for your web server and browser. I'm gonna choose inline, which seems to work best in my browser. Layout lets us choose what other details we wanna show. Full featured with the player, details, and comments section, just the player and description, or only the player. What you can see if you twirl down this integration functions area, when you choose different layouts, it's selecting different subsets of these features. So even after you choose one of the options, you can fine tune what will be shown and how your player will look even more using these options. And there are some pretty big features hidden in these checkboxes. For example, the Collect Donations checkbox allows you to make a link available for your viewers to give donations. If I have that checked here for my player, in my event, when I create a new event, under the Advanced Settings, there is a checkbox to enable donations for this event. When that is checked, I can now enter a URL for a third-party donation platform, as well as a custom message for my viewers. Size determines if the browser is resized, if the player will change size as well. Or you can set it to fixed and force the video to be a certain dimension. Fixed can break certain website layouts, so unless you have a specific purpose for setting it to fixed, I just leave it as responsive. Now that we've completely configured the code for our player, I'm gonna click the copy code button and that will copy this HTML code to my computer's clipboard. How you use this code is going to depend on how you have your website hosted. I have a WordPress site, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate. So the steps for getting this onto your website may be different depending on what website host you're using, but it will probably be a very similar process. In WordPress, I'm going to create a new page. I'll call it Live. And now what I want to do is add custom HTML to my page. So I'm gonna click the plus to add a block and then click browse all and scroll down to custom HTML. And here I can paste in my player code from the clipboard. Click update and now that page will show up on my website with the player. And because I don't have an event currently scheduled, it's showing my previous live stream. Because of the way I configured this player, it will show any of my live streamed events. I don't have to update the embed code on the website or any keys. Anytime I live stream an event from YoloCast, it will show up in this player. Let's take a look at the Media Center. This is where you can do two things. First, you can manage your live stream content after a stream has completed. On the Video tab, you'll find all the video files from your stream. If you click the three dot menu under a video, you'll be presented with some options. Create a new live event will send this video file out as if it were a new live stream. You can generate an embed code for a player to play just this video file that you could then put on your website. Just like an embedded player, but instead of any new events, it will show this video. You can also do various file management tasks like rename the file, add it to a group, which is like a folder to organize your files. You can download the file to your computer 
or generate a link to download this video file. And where that can be useful is you could send this link to someone to download the file without having to use a third-party service like Dropbox to transfer the file. When you click copy download link, if an MP4 file hasn't been generated from the live stream, the first time you click, you'll get this message. Click done and the file will begin transcoding to a downloadable MP4. Once that's completed, click the copy download link again and a link will be copied to your computer's clipboard. I could now paste this into an email and anyone with that link can now download the file. And of course, you can select to delete a video from the YOLOcast servers to free up your storage space if you need to. The second thing you can do here is to upload a video and create a simulated live stream with a pre-produced video. There are a lot of advantages to pre-producing a video and then live streaming it. I know a lot of churches did this during the pandemic. When you can edit video and audio ahead of time, it's much easier to achieve a higher quality production but you can still maintain the sense of community by having a live stream event. Or maybe you're just not comfortable going live and wanna be able to edit your videos. This lets you still have a live stream for your viewers. So to create a simulated live stream, we'll click upload video and select our video file from our computer. You can use an MP4 or MOV file. Once the file is uploaded, if we go to events and create an event, now under source, we'll select media events, simulated live. And now this new option appears for us to select the video file. Select your video and click done. Now if I were to finish configuring this event and go live, it will appear as a live stream to all my destinations, but it will be playing my video file as the source for the stream. Pictures lets you manage graphic files. These images can be used in a number of different ways, such as thumbnails for your live stream that show up in the player before a stream goes live. You can use images that you upload here as icons and overlays, and we'll talk about that later, or even as logos for your embedded players. Anytime you need an image, it will come from whatever you've uploaded to the Media Center. Documents lets us upload a PDF document. Just click Upload PDF and select a document on your computer to upload. You can make these PDF documents downloadable from your embedded player. For that to happen, first you need to turn on documents when you are configuring the code for your embedded player. If we go back to the embed page, you'll notice in the integration functions, there's an option to show documents. If that's checked, when you are streaming, you'll have the ability to make your documents show up with the embedded player. And we'll cover that in a minute when we talk about our events in more detail. The Overlays tab lets you upload images to overlay over your video while it's streaming, and that can be controlled from the event viewer. Now let's take a look at the Sources page. At the top is Default Options, and what this is telling you is that to use these sources, you don't need to do any configuration. These sources are already configured by YOLOcast. So if you are live streaming with your YOLO box as the source, it's already going to be connected by the fact that you're using the same YOLO Live account to log into your YOLO box and to log into YOLO Cast. Also, restreaming a video from a previous stream or uploading a pre-produced video file to the Media Center, all of these don't need to be configured here under Sources. When you create a new event, you can already select them as your source. But one of the cool features of YOLOcast is that you can bring your stream in from other sources as well. You don't need to use a YOLO box, as convenient as that is. You could use any RTMP or SRT source and configure up to 10 sources in YOLOcast. These could be any hardware or software encoding device like an ATEM Mini Pro or even OBS software on your computer. So let's look at how to set that up. I'm gonna show you how to stream to YOLOcast from OBS on my laptop. I'll click the Add Source button and give it a name, Laptop OBS, and the description is optional. Click Add Source, and now if I click this source, it will expand and I can see all the information that I'll need to configure my streaming software. Now I'll open OBS and go to my settings and to the stream page. 
And for service, I'm gonna select custom. And now copy in the server URL from YOLOcast and then the stream key. Click OK, and I'm gonna go ahead and start streaming. And it takes just a moment, but we'll see in YOLOcast that this source will come online. If I go back to events and create a new event, under sources select RTMP SRT, and then a new dropdown will appear for RTMP source, and I can select my laptop OBS source. Now if I finished configuring this event, and it went live, it would be getting its video from OBS on my laptop. And something important to note is that with a YOLOcast professional plan, you can have up to three concurrent events live streaming at the same time with just one YOLOcast account, and up to five with the business plan. So if you have multiple venues or multiple events, say you're live streaming weddings and your business needs to live stream two weddings on the same day, you can do that easily with YOLOcast. Let's look at the destinations page. Here's where you can send your stream to social sites and really any destination other than your embedded player. So if I click add destination, you'll see I can select Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and custom RTMP server. Let's start with Facebook. And this pop-up here says that as we configure our Facebook access, it's recommended that you set the post to public so the YOLO box can interact with user comments. So click I know start binding, and at this point, I'm already logged into my Facebook account in this browser, so it's confirming that this is the account I wanna use. If I wasn't already logged into Facebook, it would be asking me to log into the Facebook account I'm gonna be using for streaming. I'll continue as me. Here's where I wanna change friends to public so that the YOLO box can interact with comments. This next confirmation is what YOLO Live can access from your account. If you click continue now, basically YOLO Live will act as you and be able to do whatever your account can do. You can go in and choose what not to allow if you would like to refine that here and maybe only allow streaming to a particular page that you manage. But you'll also be able to select exactly where the stream will go later when you set up your event. So I'm just gonna click continue and now I have Facebook configured as a destination. Let's add YouTube. Click Add Destination and select YouTube. And now my browser again is asking what Google account I wanna use for YouTube. Or it will ask you to log in if your browser isn't already logged into your Google account. Select the account you wanna use. And now if your account manages multiple YouTube channels, it will ask what channel to live stream to. It's gonna ask if you wanna allow YOLO Live this access to your channel. Click Allow. And now I have Facebook and YouTube configured as destinations that I can send my events to. You can configure as many of these destinations as you'd like, and then live stream an event to up to 15 different destinations at the same time. Now that we have our embedded player set up, our source, destinations, and our media center all configured and ready, now would be a good time to go back to events and step through how all of those options can be applied when we create a new live event. On the events page, I'll click the create live event button. First, we'll give it a title. This is the title that will show up on your embedded player and be used by all of your other destinations. You can enter a description. And again, this will populate into your destinations if they have a description field. Content type, this is an optional field that you can select a genre for your stream. Thumbnail, click choose image and we can choose an image that's been uploaded to the picture tab in the media center to use as our thumbnail. This will show up in the player before the live stream goes live. Branding, you can choose an image to use that will be displayed on some of the pages with your embedded player. Pre-video, if you want a video to loop in the player before your stream goes live, you can select a video from the media center. So maybe you have a promotional video for the stream or announcement slides you want viewers to see. You can select that here. I want my viewers to see the countdown for now, so I'm gonna leave that blank. Source, here's where we can select where our live streamed video will come from. The first option is our YOLO box. You can select re-event, 
which will let us choose a previous live streamed video, or media video, which is a pre-produced video that you've uploaded to the media center. And then finally is the RTMPS or SRT source like OBS. For this live stream, I'm gonna be using the YOLO box. So I'm gonna select that as my source. Video resolution, this determines the resolution that viewers will receive in the embedded player. If you are streaming to any other destinations, they'll receive the resolution that is coming from your source. I want my viewers to get the full HD resolution that I'm sending from the YOLO box, so I'll select 1080p. And for frame rate, I'm not going to be doing sports with a lot of motion, so standard 30 frames per second is going to be fine. Start date. Select the day you want the live stream to start. So you can schedule a live stream well in advance if you want to, or select today's date. Enter a start time for the event, when you want it to go live, and then an end time. Or you could look at that as a duration, how long your stream will run. Coming soon, the business plan will have the option to set up a 24-7 stream that allows for continuous streaming. This will be great for internet radio stations or news channels, or if you're just looking to gain viewers on your social sites, maybe looping your videos. The checkbox for make this a recurring event this allows me to not just make this event a one-time occurrence, but to happen at a regular interval. For instance, if I have a class that happens each week at the same time, or a church service that happens each week at the same time, you can schedule it here to happen daily, weekly, or monthly. And then select the ending after determines how many occurrences of this event you want to schedule. For this demonstration, I'm going to be making this a one-time event, so I'll uncheck that. Event type, public or password. This allows you to make your embedded player password protected so that only people who have this password can view your stream. This could be useful for businesses that stream weddings or funerals where your client wants the live stream available for their friends and family, but not open to the public. You could just password protect the event and then only people who are given the password will be able to view the live stream. And now here for destinations, we can select if we want to send our stream to any of the social sites that we've configured on the destinations page. So I'll select my YouTube channel, and I need to select if the stream will be private, unlisted, or public on my channel. Then I can go back and select Facebook in the destinations dropdown again, and for Facebook you need to select where you want the stream to go to. So I can select if it will show on my timeline, a page that I manage, or a group that I manage. If you select your timeline, then you can select who the stream is watchable by, only me, friends, or public. If you choose a page, you'll be given a selection of the pages that you have access to. And if you select groups, you'll be given a selection of the groups you can stream to. I'm gonna stream this to a page, so I'll select the page I wanna stream to. And now I can click Create Event, and it shows my event here on the Upcoming Events tab. If I hover over the three dots, I could edit the event or delete it if I needed to. Once the event is set up in YOLOcast, it will now stream at that scheduled time. I don't have to do anything else in YOLOcast to make it happen. In fact, I don't even really need to have a computer or log into YOLOcast anymore if I don't want to or need to. That stream will start and stop on its own at the scheduled time. And if it's a reoccurring event, that will happen at each scheduled time without needing any interaction from me. All I need is for my YOLO box to be sending video by pressing go live, or any other source I'm using to be sending video, and I can start those well in advance of my event time. It's currently under development for YOLOcast to completely control the YOLO box. All you'll need to do is turn on the YOLO box, and YOLOcast will be able to start sending video from the YOLO box with completely automated scheduling. So keep an eye out for that feature update. All of this makes it a really easy system to learn and even train volunteers to use. And having a regularly scheduled live stream is a great way to grow your audience on social platforms. And not having to start and stop your stream each time makes it really easy for anyone to operate. When I click on a scheduled or active event on the events page, it takes me to an event viewer for my stream that gives me information about it, as well as ways to control aspects of the stream and interact with my viewers. On the right are some tabs for different things you can do while you're in the event viewer. Sources will show you stats about the video coming in from your YOLO box or other configured source. 
Not only does this let you confirm that everything is working properly, but it's a great place to start if you're having any difficulties with your connection as it's generating alerts in real time as you stream. So if for example, the stream is interrupted or the incoming bitrate drops too low, you'll see an alert here. The stream metrics will show you the bitrate and frame rate of your video that is reaching the Yolocast servers. And that gives you an idea of the general health of your stream. Destinations will show you where you are sending your stream. Analytics will give you an overview of your viewer engagement. And one of the nice things about this is that it not only shows you a total number of viewers, but it will also break it down by your destinations. Here on the document tab is where you can make a document from the media center available to your viewers. Click the add PDF file and select your file. And now it will be available to your viewers in the embedded player. On the chat tab, I can send messages that will be visible to my viewers if I've configured the embedded player to include the chat window. And viewers can also send me messages back. Scoreboard gives me the ability to overlay the score from a game. If I turn the scoreboard on, I can update the score of the game right here. By clicking the Game Info link, I can also go in and edit how the scoreboard will look, update team names, and even upload team logos from my media center to really customize the scoreboard. Finally, overlays. This is a quick and simple way to add an overlay to your stream. If I click Image Overlay, I can use images from the media center to overlay over my video. And if I click lower thirds, I can use one of the templates and then customize it to overlay a simple lower third like this. Now, let me pause for a second and say that in a minute after we finish up talking about the event viewer, we're gonna talk about the URL overlays page in YOLOcast. And that offers a much more full featured way to create and control overlays for your productions. So I would use these overlays in the event viewer, maybe for a logo bug in the corner or something like that. The URL overlay interface is much more capable. Below the video is a quick summary of my viewers and also this link that you can share that takes you to a viewer on the YOLO Live servers. This gives a full page layout for viewers to interact with your documents and even participate in chat. This edit highlights clip is a really neat feature. Even while you are still streaming, when you click on this and click Capture New Highlights, you're presented with a timeline of your live streamed video up to that point and an in and out marker. So I'll give it a name, maybe goal. Then I can zoom in and out to find the part of the video I want to highlight and drag these red bars to mark the start and stop of my highlighted clip. Then click Save. And now a list of these highlights has started. I can click the download button to generate a video file to be downloaded. And when that's ready, I can download it to my computer. Or I can click the share button and this gives me the ability to create an embedded player that will just show this clip on my website. Or I can post the clip directly to social media as a video. So for instance, if I click Facebook, I can now select where I want this video to be posted using my account information. This is a really powerful feature that's so quick and easy to use. I can think of so many applications that this would be great. For live streaming sports, you can show all your team's highlights. Or for a church, you can live stream your whole service and then use this to post the highlight of just the sermon. And with YOLOcast, you can do this all before your live stream has even ended. While you are streaming, YOLOcast will allow you to switch from your live source to a pre-produced video right in the middle of your stream. Go up here to Add Video Source, click Add Video, and select a video file from your media center. 
Now click insert into stream and your pre-produced video will be sent out on your stream, replacing what you currently have live. And when you're ready to go back to the actual live source, just click the back to live button and your live stream will be switched back to the source you have configured in your event. In my case, what's coming from my YOLO box. And of course, if you don't want to stream all the way to the scheduled end of your event, you can click the stop event button and then confirm that. And this will end your live stream to all of your destinations as well as the embedded player. Now, if we go back to the events page and go to the past events tab, we'll see our event. And if we click on it, we'll go back into the event viewer and we can do some additional things here like trim the recording. If you wanna remove any dead air that may have occurred at the beginning or end of your live stream, you can tighten up where the video file will start and end. And this interface is really similar to creating a highlight. Just drag the red handles in on both ends to where you want and click save. Now that's what future viewers of this video will see from the YOLO Live servers, either in the embedded player or if you restream the video. Of course, again, we can create more highlight clips from the finished stream. You can generate captions for your video, or you can completely replace your live streamed video with a different video altogether. It gives you the option to use a video you've uploaded to the media center, or you can choose a highlighted clip from a stream. The advantage to replacing a video is that it leaves all your embedded links intact and your analytics data is still associated with the event. But you could replace what future viewers will see with maybe your best performance or something that you've worked on in post-production to make it better than the live streamed version. You can download the original video file of the completed stream, click download and generate download, and it could take a few minutes, but eventually you'll be given a link to download the file. You could also generate an audio file from your stream and download that. This is a great feature if you have a podcast. Let's take a look at the URL overlays feature of YOLOcast. The URL overlays provide you with a way to generate and control overlay graphics from your browser and send that to your YOLO box to be overlaid over your video. So while you can generate overlays on the YOLO box itself, being able to do it here in a browser on your computer makes it a lot easier to edit and set up. So let's take a look at how this works. If we twirl down URL overlays, we're presented with a few pages. If we go to overlays library, this is an ever-growing library of templates we can use for our overlays. There's an assortment of scoreboards for different sports and then some designs for names and titles and even scrolling text. So now if I hover over one of these and click add to my overlays, it will make it available to me to load on my YOLO box. You could give them a new name to identify it, but I'm just gonna click add to my overlays. Now if I go to my overlays page, I'll see this overlay and I'm gonna hover over it and select open control. And this opens a new tab in my browser with the control interface for this overlay. Here on the left column is a list of overlays I can take live on my video. And right now I just have this one. Let's now jump over to the YOLO box and add this overlay. On the YOLO box, I'm gonna go to the overlays page and touch the red plus button to add an overlay. And I'm gonna select web URL overlay and then choose from YOLOcast. And here I can see the overlays that have been added to my overlays back in YOLOcast. I'll select the lower third and I'm gonna scale it all the way up to full size and touch done. Now when I select this overlay, it will be placed over my video. But right now it just still has the generic information and colors. So let's go back to our browser and to the control page. Here in the middle of the page are all the editable parameters that I can modify for this overlay. So let's change the title to my name, Stephen Ballast, and the subtitle to Live Streaming Guy. Now at the top of the page, click Update, and now the new information is being sent out. So if I go back to my YOLO box and take that overlay, it now has my name and that title updated. 
Now, one of the cool things in control is that maybe I know that through the course of my production, I'm gonna have a lot of people speaking. And so I wanna be able to quickly put up their name. To make that happen, I'm gonna change the overlay name to Steven and click update again. And so you can see that over here on the left, it's updated to my name. Now click add overlay and select another one of these overlays. This time I'll call it John and enter in the information. John Smith, guest speaker, and click update. Now using the play button next to the title of each lower third, I can quickly bring up the one that I wanna show. And what we are seeing here in the output is what is being sent out to the YOLO box. So if you leave this overlay active on the YOLO box, you can turn on and off your overlays and control what's shown right from your browser. Another cool thing about this is that everything that I build here in control is saved in my overlays in YOLOcast. So the next time I go to stream, I'll have access to all the lower thirds or scoreboards and the information I've entered again the next time I open up YOLOcast. The reports page in YOLOcast gives you a detailed look at your viewers. Not only how many views you had, but also how viewers are watching your content, what devices and resolutions they watch at, and what destinations they're watching from which all can be important when planning and promoting your future live streams. You can view the data over a date range that you select here at the top and see the data from all events over those days. Or if you scroll to the bottom, you can select a particular event and view just its data. The settings page in YOLOcast lets you view and update your account information, view your billing and what plan you are currently on. You can also add additional users who can log in and use your YOLOcast platform. Maybe your organization needs to have several people able to access the platform. You can add more users here. Click the Add User button and enter a name, email address, and password for the new user. They will be sent a confirmation email and when they click on the link in the email to verify their account and then log into YOLOcast, they will have access to all the same features and information the main account does. The only thing additional users don't have access to is the ability to create and remove users in the settings page. But otherwise, they have all the same permissions to create and access your events and everything else you've created in YOLOcast. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of the YOLOcast platform and can see how it can help you build your next live streamed event. Until next time, bye.